How's it going everybody? George here from GP Lifestyle and in today's video I'll be going over 10 ways that I am upgrading my style. This is one of the reasons why I haven't posted outfit videos in a couple of months as well as I got rid of the microphone boom because I can't talk without having a free hand for some reason. Without further delay, let's jump into it. The first thing that I'm doing is focusing on the basics, the capsular element of my wardrobe and the absolute basics. Now I talked about this before in a video I made where I basically cleaned out the majority of the stuff in my closet and I think when you have less clothing and you focus in on items that are versatile, minimal if that's your style, and capsular elements that you really like and that are timeless and classic, your decision making on what you're going to wear is going to be a lot clearer because you don't have a bunch of crap that you don't like fogging up what outfits and ideas that you really want to try out. And I think moving into this element, it's definitely cleared up what type of aesthetic I want to go for and it's actually been saving me a little bit of money when it comes to trying out new trends because when you have that basics element in there you don't have to go and buy different pieces to get that same look. The second way I'm changing my style is less tapered pants. Now tapered and fitted pants, trousers, jeans, yes they're all part of that classic menswear videos you find on YouTube and that classic tapered super fitted, but these get very boring very quickly. And I have an issue with them when it comes to pairing them with certain sneakers that are a bit on the chunkier side, like Forces or even something like Doc Martens or chunkier loafers. They tend to look, they can look a little goofy with them, but I'm not totally against them. I'm just, I just like having stuff like uh, jeans, especially like uh, mid-wash and light-wash denim in a very just regular straight-cut fit. I think it looks amazing and a lot better with something like Air Forces or Jordan 1s. It is definitely something that I've incorporated more into my summer fashion, and I just like it because they're also comfortable. I'm also trying to find any reason to wear clothing that looks good and that is comfortable. Let me put a knee up for this one. And number three is oversized basics. I have redone my basic element on my wardrobe, especially when it comes to t-shirts, crew necks, and even long sleeve shirts. I went with a more oversized look for most of the um, t-shirts, especially going with the Uniqlo Airism line, which I am a huge fan of because I like the color palettes. I just love how comfortable they are and they don't make me sweaty. Now, the reason I went with oversized tops is I feel like a lot of times if you're getting into men's fashion and you start off with like the, the bare bones basics of fitted this and fitted that and super minimal colors, you are going to grow out of that phase within like a year or two and really want to explore a lot of the different options that are out there. And I think going with oversized basics that you can color block nicely definitely adds a little more character to very simple outfits. And I'm mostly playing around with the fit and texture of a lot of different outfit and clothing pieces I wear now, which is playing around with texture, it's a little bit difficult, but definitely playing around with sizing is quite fun and it just sort of breathes some new light into very simple things. Number four is more emphasis on color blocking. Now, I remember when I made my video about color blocking, it was like 10 minutes long, just straight color blocking theory. I really practiced that for the next few months and I wasn't I wasn't too confident in sharing it because a lot of the ideas didn't work like for every good fit I thought of there was like three or four horrible ones but definitely when you start color blocking your outfits more and making that an emphasis you're going to be a lot more confident in what you wear and you're going to squeeze out a bunch more outfits that you didn't previously conceive of and I just like it and it's a great and fun way to focus. Number five is kind of fun and I'm kind of excited and that is going down the custom slash DIY path. Like in the simplest way, this shirt that I found at the mall, it was a short sleeve. I didn't like how it looked because it shrunk in the wash and the sleeves, like the, the, like the body was oversized and the, the sleeves were kind of riding up my arm and like I didn't like it. So I just made it into a cutoff. I breathed 
new life into something I would have just tossed and bought another thing of. And I just like going down the custom slash DIY path. I took out an old pair of uh, Wrangler blue jeans I found at Walmart and I bleached them to make them light wash. And I like the look. It breathes some new life into them. Now, instead of buying a different pair of light wash jeans, now I can go ahead and wear these. And actually, my girlfriend and I were just waiting for, you know, to pick a day. But we're going to customize um, Air Forces, which we just saw and like. And she's really into art and painting. So we thought it'd be a fun date idea because I wanted to get a pair of like Berlin one uh, uh, low Jordan ones at a brain fart there, but you can barely find them. And, you know, paying three, four times more for a certain color wave, it's, it's not a vibe. So going down this path, it's very fun. It's very creative. It can be as simple as bleaching stuff, making stuff into cutoffs like this old denim jacket I made into a denim vest. I think it looks kind of cool. And this is just fun because you don't, you're not spending a lot of money and you're breathing new life into old things that you necessarily would have tossed. Before we jump into the final five points, if you guys are enjoying the video so far, be sure to drop a like and comment down below if you found any of these ideas helpful. Let's move on. Number six is accessorizing. Now, we, I love accessorizing because it brings that element of individualism in certain outfits that you can really use accessories to make this outfit your own and not just something you took from, you know, an Instagram page or a YouTube video. And I like here because when you accessorize, no two people are going to have the exact same thing that they use to accessorize. Now, you, this can be simple as just a watch and ring or playing around with different types of links and ring types to really bring in a unique texture and style into things. And I think no matter what outfit you're wearing, accessorizing and being unique in the accessories that you pick out, whether it's links or styles, definitely can spice up any outfit you wear because of that element. Number seven is going to hurt some people's ears, but I am simplifying my sneaker game. I'm sort of moving away from a lot of the, a lot of the vans and a lot of the super minimal sneakers and really focusing in on um, Air Forces I really like, all white or even the ones with the burgundy swoosh that I tried to clean and bring back to life. The customs that I talked about, a little bit maybe just keep my one pair of Jordan 1s and really focusing more on a lot of different um, black, so like black quilted high top Converse. I don't have them in time for this video, but I order them. I like the texture, pro, uh, these chunky loafers and uh, Doc Martin high tops. And I just really like keeping the color blocking for the sneakers and footwear simple having some that have a little bit of zest of color in them but keeping the rest simple and versatile so i can focus in on different aspects of my fashion i feel like the more you simplify things the better your style is going to be when you really get experimental because if you're all over the place and trying to find your lane it's going to be harder for you number eight is something i've been a fan of for years that i'm still going to continue doing that is more vintage inspiration definitely here when it comes to graphics like graphic tees crew necks and definitely something more along the lines of pants like uh, denim and cargos definitely having that element in there i think is great because we're playing around with the fit and as well as some of the texture and color blocking the outfits and i definitely think it's something if you haven't tried you definitely should because you're really going to enjoy it plus when you go with vintage inspiration a lot of the clothes tend to fit on the looser side so you have another excuse to be comfortable <laughs> number nine is a bit of a headache for me that i'm trying and that is more high fashion designer inspiration definitely i've been researching a lot of what are the really expensive brands doing and seeing if there's anything that I really like that I can find a way to integrate in my own style. And this has been very difficult because A, things are very expensive or they're just a little too out there for my personal taste. But one of the things that I've noticed is that you don't really need to copy a lot of the designer trends. You just need to get an idea and test it out and really try and repeat and I figure that works pretty well like one of the things that I really liked was these um, concealed um, suit jackets because you'll see and in, in why in my next point but 
I like this because it's made, it's something different that I really like. I can see a little bit of the uh, Korean or Japanese fashion influence here. And this is definitely something that I've taken inspiration and want to try and integrate. And just because you can't afford those pieces doesn't mean you can't take inspiration from them and try to find a way to implement it in what you have right now or what you can find at a more reasonable price. And the 10th one is kind of the most difficult so far because it is casual suits and blazers. I have really never been a suit guy. I feel like a lot of modern suits is just a little bit outdated. They're not super fashionable because in they look good, but they're not fashionable in the sense that when you buy a suit, 90% of it is done for you. You have a dress shirt, a matching blazer and trousers, and you just basically put on a belt and shoes. I'm like, whoop de doo you look good because somebody else put it basically together for you. I was really trying to find ways that I can implement casual options into summertime suit looks. So definitely I picked up these two uh, jackets from um, Uniqlo, and I like them because they're a little bit more on the casual side, those two pockets, a little bit of details on the buttons would go nice with some of the gold accessories I like to wear. And again, taking a little bit of inspo from these higher fa for high fashion designer looks with a more deconstructionist approach, whether it's something that's collarless, double-breasted concealed, single-breasted concealed, and I think I think suits have really lost touch with what generation they're targeting. And I feel like late millennials, early and late Gen Z really find this kind of corny and outdated. But if you find a way to make them not vintage, but sort of modern with a more deconstructionist approach, it can bring suits and dapper wear into a newer generation and really modernize it. Here you guys have a 10 ways that I am upgrading my style with some examples tossed in. If you guys made it this far into the video, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to drop a like and hit that subscribe button because if you watch this far, you're way more serious about dressing better, looking better, and ultimately being better. Thank you guys so much for watching and comment down below again what you found here that to be super helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Peace.